In this video, we're going to compare and contrast obstructive versus restrictive pulmonary disease. We're going to look at pathophysiology first, circle back to symptoms and how they correlate. So if we have a bronchiole that is ending here into an alveolus, and that's where gas exchange happens. So here's the capillary, and here's the oxygen moving out. You have macrophages that reside in the alveolus that are typically sentinel cells waiting for bacteria or other pathogens to come in and they'll present them. But if you have some kind of trigger, this could be like a, a small organic dust of some sort that's about one to five micrometers in diameter, it can set off these alveolar macrophages and they'll release cytokines and that will attract neutrophils to come in to the lung tissue and, and surrounding areas there and they'll release reactive oxygen species. That kind of damages the lung tissue. Also, T lymphocytes come in and they're releasing their pro-inflammatory cytokines and just making the cycle that more uh, vicious in a sense. And so, if this happens over and over and over and you have this repeated lung injury, fibroblasts will start infiltrating the lung tissue, the parenchyma, and they'll um, lay down fiber, fibrous tissue. And fibrotic tissue doesn't expand very well, so when you inhale, it restricts the amount of air that you can bring into your lungs. And um, you also have some of that fibrotic tissue that will kind of deposit around the basement membrane and perform a, a barrier to that oxygen exchange and carbon dioxide exchange. And so that's going to result in dyspnea and hypoxia because you're going to have difficulty breathing because you have poor perfusion and you can't inhale as much as you normally do and then you're going to be hypoxic, your, your oxygen saturation is going to be low between not getting enough air in and the perfusion here. So if you listen to someone's lungs that has restricted uh, disease, then you'll hear crackles, little pops, because um, those little alveoli will collapse, and then as you inhale, it's almost like you have to uh, overcome that pressure and open them. And as the alveoli pop open, you hear little crackles. If they're lower pitch, you can call them rails, but higher pitch is called crackles. It kind of like Velcro is what it sounds like. So this could be idiopathic where there's no rhyme or reason as to why someone starts depositing fibrous tissue in their lung. Or it could be intrinsic where the lung itself, for some reason, is becoming fibrotic, such as one of those, if you have an occupation, like you're a farmer and you're, you're always getting these fungal spores from the hay, that could be a trigger that could set off these alveolar macrophages and cause repeated injury. Maybe um, asbestos from whole, um, someone who's always up in the attic and dealing with old insulation or in working in a mine where silicone's there. So all these little organic dust particles can set it off and especially if you're working in that day in and day out repeatedly injuring your lung tissue. Sarcoidosis typically seen in younger African-American females, late 20s, early 30s, not sure why, but these caseating granulomas will form all through the lungs and that causes repeated injury that is needed for the fibrotic tissue to take place. Autoimmune diseases, you get immune complexes within the lung parenchyma and from systemic lupus erythematosus or rheumatoid arthritis, whatever the autoimmune disease is, it can also cause that repeated damage. Uh, extrinsic causes. Anything that's structural, like the chest wall, for example, you know, if you have ankylosing spondylitis, the ribs won't move out and you don't get that good Boyle's Law effect. Or if you have um, kyphosis or scoliosis or something just where the, the ribs don't expand like they should. And then something going on with the diaphragm, this could be like myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, amyotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease where you can have the, maybe the innervation or the muscle itself gets weak and doesn't work. The diaphragm is really important because when it contracts, it moves downward and really increases the volume of the thoracic cavity to, to attract that oxygen into the lungs. So that's restrictive pulmonary disease. Let's move on over to obstructive pulmonary disease where this has several diseases that fall under this umbrella. COPD, that stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. There's two diseases that are under this umbrella, the sub-umbrella, I guess, and that would be chronic bronchitis, which is defined as um, productive cough for three months consi uh, consistently for two years in a row. So that's the, the technical diagnosis of it. But what happens with this is that 
this chemical irritant, usually cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke is primarily the cause for COPD. So cigarette smoke will stimulate increased mucus in the airways. And when you breathe out, you can't get past that mucus. And so it kind of traps the air back. And that's called chronic bronchitis. And it, it does this two ways. One way is the chemical irritants will actually increase, uh, cause hyperplasia of the goblet cells. So it's increasing the number of mucus producing cells. It'll also cause hypertrophy of the submucosa within the, the higher airways like the bronchi, and that will stimulate mucus production. So either way, you have to get air past those mucus plugs to breathe out, and, and it's just difficult, makes breathing difficult. Um, so they have dyspnea and hypoxia as well. Emphysema is the other one. What happens here is a little different pathogenesis. So you have this balance typically that goes on in your lungs where you have elastases balanced out by alpha uh, one antitrypsin, which is a protein that's produced by your, your liver. And so when you have this good balance, it's all good. But if you smoke, smoking will inhibit alpha one antitrypsin, so it can't have its effect. And it'll also stimulate more elastases because the irritant causes inflammation that attracts white blood cells like neutrophils to the area and macrophages that will release elastases. And elastases are enzymes that break down elastic fibers. So you have elastic fibers around your alveoli and around your bronchioles and your airways that when you breathe in, it'll expand and it'll recoil nicely and really contribute to the expiration. And um, that expansion will also prevent, those elastic tissues will also prevent them from collapsing. But if you have these elastases come in, and weaken those walls, and um, a lot of times these alveoli actually coalesce where if several of them come together to form bigger ones, that decreases the surface area, that decreases perfusion when you have decreased surface area for the gas exchange. So whenever you breathe out, a lot of times these little bronchioles will collapse and you get air trapped behind and you can't get the rest of your air out. And so you can actually use spirometry where you breathe out so you'll do a maximal inspiration. You'll breathe out as hard and fast as you can for a second. And if it's slower than normal, that's a good uh, indication that someone might have COPD or some obstructive pulmonary disease. So a big distinction is restrictive, you have trouble getting air in. Obstructive, you have trouble getting air out. And so um, that brings us to this air trapping that can take place whenever those bronchioles collapse you can have hyper expansion of the chest wall they get this barrel chest and in an x-ray you see uh, that hyper expansion you can percuss over the you can percuss over the lungs and you, you get more of a resonant sound than you typically do so you also hear upon auscultation a wheeze sound so upon it's it's ex expiration that you hear it, the wheeze sound and a little bit lower pitch wheeze is called a ronchi and uh, two other forms of obstructive pulmonary disease include asthma. This is reversible. This is where some kind of allergen or cold weather or exercise can, can cause a spasm of that smooth muscle around the, the bronco, bronchioles and it'll cause them to uh, constrict and it'll be really hard to get the air out. And you'll actually hear them wheeze even without a stethoscope. And it's really important to reverse that as soon as possible with like albuterol inhalers that are beta-2 agonists that stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, get it more air in, dilate those, um, those bronchioles. So that's asthma. And again, this is irreversible. You know, if you, if you test it on spirometry, it's, all, it's gonna be there. But asthma, it's only bad when they're having a, uh, a, you know, a flare up. And then this is cystic fibrosis, which is one more obstructive pulmonary disease where you have this gene on chromosome number seven. It's called the CFTR gene. It makes this protein that allows a good channel for chloride channels in the respiratory epithelium, that pseudostratified columnar epithelium that lines our respiratory tract. So what happens is it's on the apical side and chloride will move from the cell to the lumen of our respiratory airway and what it does is that chloride will move out and water will follow it because it's a solute and through osmosis water will follow it and that'll provide a nice consistency for the mucus 
and the mucus be watery and that mucociliary movement beating that where that cilia moves all the mucus upward and away from the lungs works properly. Well, when you have cystic fibrosis, the chloride gets trapped in those epithelial cells that line the, the airways. And so water can't get out either. And the, and the mucus that's produced is tarry and just kind of thick and the, the cilia can't move it. And it's just like a breeding ground for, for bacterial infections and viral infections. So you see a lot of recurrent infections. And when this happens, it causes a lot of times complications where the smooth muscle of the bronchioles and the, the elastic tissue of the bronchioles get destroyed and it causes bronchiectasis where you have this big dilation kind of floppy um, uh, bronchioles. So that's obstructive pulmonary disease and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. To learn more about the human body, subscribe, turn on those post notifications, give this video a big thumbs up. Bye.